In question 8, we're given 4x minus 5 minus x squared is equal to q minus the quantity x plus p all squared, where p and q are integers. In part A, we're asked to find the value of p and the value of q. The question carries three marks. What we're looking to do here is complete the square. I'm just going to rewrite this in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So if we have ax squared plus bx plus c, we can write this quadratic as minus x squared plus 4x minus 5. I need to complete the square, and to do that, I need to have the coefficient of the term in x squared equal to positive 1. I'm going to take the first two terms and factor out minus 1. That's going to give me minus the quantity x squared minus 4x, and then outside the brackets, I'm going to have the minus 5. You can, of course, take in a minus 5 if you wish. If I complete the square on these two terms, we will have minus now the quantity x plus half the coefficient, which will be x minus 2. We now need to square the bracket and subtract away minus 2 squared, which will give me minus 4. And then we have the minus 5. Multiplying through by minus 1, we'll have minus the quantity x minus 2 all squared. We will have plus 4 minus 5, and that will now give me, rewriting in the form I want, minus 1 minus the quantity x minus 2 all squared, and that now is in completed square form. So from here we can see that p will be equal to minus 2, and q will be equal to minus 1. So final answer, p is minus 2, q is minus 1. In part b, we're asked to calculate the discriminant of 4x minus 5 minus x squared. I've put it in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. The discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. Let's now consider the values of a, b and c. a is going to be minus 1. We can see that from here. b is going to be 4 and c is going to be minus 5. So b is equal to positive 4 and c is going to be equal to to minus 5. So with the discriminant we will have 4 squared minus 4 times by a which is minus 1 times by c which is minus 5. That will give me positive 20 multiplying by minus 4 will give me minus 20. So we'll have 16 minus 20 so we can say that the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is minus 4. In part C, it says, on the axis on page 17, sketch the curve with equation y is equal to 4x minus 5 minus x squared, showing clearly the coordinates of any point where the curve crosses the coordinate axis. The question carries three marks. We can put it in this form, or I could write this now as x minus 2, and we would square the bracket, we'd have minus the quantity, minus 1. In part B, we took the discriminant. The discriminant was minus 4. Therefore, we can say that there's going to be no real solutions for x. So all we're really interested in is where this crosses the y-axis. And that's when x is going to be equal to 0. So here's my little sketch. And what I'm going to state at this stage now, we can say that b squared minus 4ac, and I'm just going to write it here, b squared minus 4ac less than 0, which gives us no real roots. So we're not going to have any points of intersection with now the x-axis. If we let uh, x be equal to 0, so now let x be equal to 0, y will be equal to minus, then we'll have 0 minus 2 squared minus 1. This is going to give me 4 minus 4 minus 1, that will give me y is equal to minus 5. So the only point of intersection we're going to have is just here, and that's going to be 0, comma, minus 5. At this stage, we could use the completed square form to write now the maximum point. Remember, this now is a negative quadratic equation, so the parabola will open downwards. If we look at this as a translation, this is going to be 2 in the positive x direction and minus 1 in the y direction, or 1 in the negative y direction. So our minimum, uh, sorry, maximum point is going to be just here, and the parabola will open up something like so. So this is a rough sketch. We're not asked for the maximum point. I'm going to write it on anyway, and that's 2, 
minus 1. This is what we need, and we can state now that y is equal to 4x minus 5 minus x squared. So three marks in total for the graph, and as stated, you don't need to put on the maximum point.